Hi, this is Ashok here. I am a trainer for CFA and you are watching Phoenix training YouTube channel where I make content pertaining to CFA and investment banking topics. So, bond. So, uh, when I say bond, what, what comes to the mind? So, what I can think about is agreement. Bond refers to agreement. So, agreement as in what? So, when I, when I say agreement, agreement is always between you know like uh, uh, two people so let's say here so agreement between x and y and, uh, and what is this agreement about about agreement will always have clauses like agreement on what so here there is a borrower it's an agreement between the borrower and an agreement between the uh, lender this lender is also called as investor because he is investing and this borrower is also called as uh, issuer because he is issuing bond. Okay, so it's an agreement between this borrower and the lender. So agreement on what? Agreement on the principal amount that the borrower is borrowing. Principal amount. So let's say like something like thousand thousand rupees he is borrowing. Okay, he is borrowing. And then what else? So when he is borrowing, it will have further clauses also for their agreement agreement about the interest rate interest rate which is also called as the coupon rate interest rate okay and so what will be the rate of interest and further agreement will be the frequency of interest payment so frequency of interest payment so how frequently the interest has to be paid whether it should be monthly it should be half yearly yearly it should be quarterly that frequency will be a part of the agreement and then agreement on the maturity date okay so when will this principal amount be repaid that is the maturity date so all these together forms a part of you know like all these together forms part of uh, a bond and all these will be mentioned in the prospectus for bond the prospectus is called as in danger it is pronounced as in danger i n d e n t u r e so in danger will have all the all the uh, terms and conditions of this bond okay this bond so it's an agreement through which a company uh, or your borrower is borrowing and who is this borrower it can be a company or it can be government also even they can fall short of uh, uh, capital and they can raise capital by issuing bonds okay and who who are these uh, lenders or investors it can be retail investors like you and me so it can be retail investors it can be hni high net worth individuals okay it can be institutional investors now who is this institutional investors like mutual funds insurance companies banks so all these so insurance when we are uh, uh, when we are paying premium what do they do with that money they one of this is one of their investments they invest in bonds so insurance companies banks i mean these are the, these are these are the lenders okay yeah and there are various types of bonds various types of bonds something like you know corporate bonds issued by the corporate companies corporate bonds government bonds issued by the government apart from this there are many other bonds as well uh, let's say zero coupon bond so in zero coupon bond there is no coupon paid what do you mean by coupon coupon as in interest rate okay coupon and interest rates are same only coupon rate interest rates are same why do we call this as coupon rate is just because you know in those days before electronic age came into existence um, in bonds, you know, on the back side of the bond, it used to be in an, uh, uh, it used to be a certificate, right? Bond used to be a certificate. They will give, they will issue a certificate as the proof that you are holding the bond. On the back side of the certificate, there will be coupons attached to it. So when you are, when, when the due date comes to pay the interest, you have to tear that, you know, uh, coupon payment, and you have to, you know, uh, go to the company, give that coupon pay, uh, coupon, and get the interest uh, interest payment so that's why this name came to be called as coupon which is existing till date okay now zero coupon means what if a company is not at all issuing any coupon then how are they uh, getting this uh, bond i mean why how are they uh, how, how would anybody invest into this bond so how it works is 
see a typical bond works in this way like you know if i say if your bond you know maturity is something like 5 years so if it is for 5 years and imagine 5 year bond and 1000 rupees is the principal amount and uh, interest let's say 10 percentage so 10 percentage of 1000 comes to 100 so every year company will keep paying 100 100 100 and at the time of maturity they will they will pay back the principal amount 1000 whereas in zero coupon bond what happens is here uh, company will not pay any dividends okay company will not pay any dividends 0 1 2 3 4 5 so they will not pay any dividend at the end they will pay you know 1000 but however when they are issuing this bond they will issue at a discounted price say for example they will issue at 950 they will issue at 950 and uh, you know this 50 uh, is the this 50 uh, okay let's say this is yeah this 50 is the uh, this this 50 uh, is the income this 50 is the income for the investor which he is going to get at the end which he is going to get at the end sorry i have written this is 1000 so let this be yeah 950 okay this 50 is the return so this is what zero coupon bond why would somebody uh, issue such kind of bond see see for companies like muthut finance bond what do they do what is their business uh, uh, what, what, what is their business they they uh, issue bonds they they get capital and that capital is routed to other uh, borrowers and who will keep paying interest every month so when they keep paying interest every month it is possible for muthut to keep paying uh, or to keep routing that interest back to the investors bond investors whereas for companies like you know uh, for engineering companies or example like lnt company you now this kind of companies they get big big projects and uh, you know projects like infrastructure building uh, metro uh, train building so such kind of uh, business uh, such kind of projects will take a lot of time to generate cash you know it it, it takes almost like 5 years to make one metro rail so when this kind of long tenure happens for their projects they cannot promise their investors that you know they will keep paying interest uh, every year or every half yearly so for such uh, kind of situations they will come up with a zero coupon bond wherein they don't have to keep paying interest every every now and then and uh, they can you know it, uh, but however the amount will keep accumulating and at the end they will pay in one go this is called zero coupon bonds okay then other types of bonds are like floating rate bonds so floating rate bonds so what happens in your floating rate bonds is like you know your interest is linked to the interest payment is linked to some other reference rate okay say for example it is linked to cpi consumer price inflation index so if the inflation is 6 percentage company will pay 6 percentage next year if it goes to 7 company will pay 7 next year if it goes to 5 company will pay 5 so based on the interest rate uh, prevailing in the consumer price index uh, one accordingly interest will will be paid that's why it is floating rate uh, bonds okay then there are some other types of bonds also uh, like you know callable bonds callable bond so what is callable bond okay so callable bond say for example see uh, this bond is for 10 years and uh, and so you know and the bond this is imagine this is muthut finance bond this is muthut finance bond and it is paying every year 10 percentage 10 percentage 10 percentage 10 percentage uh, let's say 1 2 3 4 5 uh, I mean 5 6 10 percentage 10 percentage now imagine sixth year the prevailing interest rate in the market is only 8 percentage what does that mean now interest rate has come down in the market uh, uh, so that means other companies which are raising capital from the market say for example LNT so lnt is raising capital uh, from the market at the rate of 8 percentage okay because that's what the rates rate is prevailing at that time so in that case muthut finance as a company 
you know is wondering like when the interest rate in the market is only 8 percentage why should i pay 10 percentage to my uh, bond holders okay so what will they do so they and imagine you know when they were issuing this uh, bond they had a research team and they predicted that you know few years down the line the interest rate will come down in the market so what they will do is in their in danger in danger as in the prospectus so in their in danger they will clearly mention that it is a callable bond so what do you mean by callable it means that you know uh, that that in case if the interest rate comes down in the market here like the way it has come down over here this will give them the right right to right to call back or right to buy back okay right to buy back the issued bond right to buy back right to buy back the issued bond okay so they have the right to take back the issued bond from the uh, bond holders okay so what they will do is when the interest rate is low in the market like this like you know it's eight percentage they will take back the bond from the investors and so they don't have to keep paying uh, you know uh, 10 percentage over here so this is their savings this is their savings however so in that case can the investors say no at that time no they cannot say no at that time they will have to surrender reason being it is already already mentioned in the endanger at the time of uh, issuance that it is a callable bond that means the the company has the right to call back so it will be very clearly mentioned that when they they will call back if at all they call back and and what price they will call back uh, uh, when they call back so what do you mean by what price they will call back say for example typically you know uh, around 20 percentage premium they will call back at say for example like if the price is thousand here they have borrowed thousand they will they will you know promise to pay thousand two hundred which will again be mentioned in the endanger itself itself okay at the time of issuance so thousand two hundred as in why why are they doing like this reason being imagine uh, you know when uh, in the endanger they are saying that it is a callable bond at the time of issuance this will not be liked by the investors because it is kind of confusing them they don't know whether they will keep getting interest for the next 10 years or in between you know after six years the company will call back so in order to so this will discourage the investors so in order to encourage them the company will say that look i will keep paying you interest till till the end 10 years but however uh, 10 percentage i will keep paying but however if at all i call back if at all like for example in this case after six years i will pay you premium so instead of paying back your thousand i will pay like 20 percentage more so this will bring in further interest in the investors and so they will be okay to take the risk of uncertainty uh, thinking that if at all the company calls back they will at least get little bit more around 20 percentage or so will be more so this is how this uh, callable bond uh, works and what will the company do after after calling back they imagine they are still in need of money so the company will reissue it again in the market but this time at the prevailing rate that is eight percentage and so automatically they are making two percentage profit so this is how callable bond works and and vice versa for putable bond so how does a putable bond work so putable bond so zero to again 10 years so every year they are paying imagine 10 percentage 10 percentage they are paying every year 10 percentage and then over here let's say this is one two three four uh, five ten percentage and sixth year let's say so sixth year the interest rate in the market goes to 12 percentage now so when it is going to 12 percentage imagine other companies like lnt they are uh, they are issuing 12 percentage to the bond holders now in that case mutut is very happy that you know they have to issue only 10 percentage but then you think from the investors perspective so think from the investors bond holders think from mutut bond holders perspective mutut bond holders perspective in this case so mutut promised 10 percentage so bond holders are getting 10 percentage now uh, investors bond holders perspective this uh, this bond this bond is not of you know much interest to them because it is giving them only 10 percentage whereas in the market it is 12 percentage so what these bond holders will do is they will surrender it back to the company if this is a putable bond okay again this will be mentioned in the in danger itself if it is a putable bond it will be mentioned in the in danger so under putable bond what happens it will give them right 
so bond holders bond holders will get the right to surrender it bond holders will get the right to surrender or right to sell it back will get the right to sell right to sell it back to the company to the issuer sell it back uh, to the issuer right to sell it back to the issuer so this is called puttable bond right to sell it back to the issuer and once they get back their uh, principal amount they will again you know they can they can reinvest uh, uh, you know something like lnt and get 12 percentage uh, interest okay so so this is this is favoring the investors whereas callable bond is favoring the uh, issuer companies okay all right this is this is the difference between callable and puttable bond so callable bonds to puttable bonds then euro bonds so euro bonds now what is euro bonds euro bonds as in say for example country of uh, you know your company of one country say for example you know uh, let's say indian company indian company indian indian company issuing bond issuing bond in japan denominated in us dollar then it becomes a it becomes an euro bond denominated in in denominated in euro uh, sorry denominated in us dollar denominated in us dollar this is an example of euro bond okay so this euro is a misnomer don't go with the name as in like don't be under the impression that it is issued only in euro it was started in europe and that's the reason you know this name came up as euro bond but otherwise uh, you know uh, it can be issued by any any company from any country uh, so so what is euro bond so euro bond means uh, your bond which is uh, uh, you know the company which is issuing bond that company is is uh, uh, is registered in one country issued in another country and the currency at which uh, currency in which it is issued is of some other country only so everything is different here issuing country is in another uh, is different issued in another country and the currency is some other third country's currency so in that case it is called as euro bonds then deferred bond deferred bond is very similar to uh, zero coupon bond as in like quite similar to zero coupon bond in deferred bond what happens is you are deferring let's say for three four years you are deferring zero one two three for three years you are deferring the interest payment and post that you will keep paying normal interest payment if you are promising 10 percentage so 10 percentage you will keep paying uh, you will keep paying however you know initially you will defer but all this will be mentioned in the endanger itself that you are going to defer and from the you know third year onward or fourth year onwards you will keep paying the interest then it is called as deferred bond okay so these are some of the some of the types of bonds 